Singh, etc. Today we have an eminent speaker or resource person through online, Rishikesh Sir. He is going to present on the topic of digital currency, the future of your money. This session will be benefited to all participants to acquire the latest trends in the digital currency and to all in this digitalized world. Rishikesh Sir is an assistant professor, finance and accounting, School of Commerce, Christ University, Bangalore. He is an alumni of Delhi School of Economics, qualified MPhil, MCom, MPA and UGC net in commerce and management subjects. He has submitted PhD thesis at Bhatia University, Coimbatore and works as assistant professor at Christ University, Bangalore. He is also a coachee co-teaching at Australian Catholic University, Melbourne, and is a visiting faculty at reputed colleges in India. He worked with the Sri Ram College of Commerce, Delhi, Providence Women's College, Calicut, Films, Calicut, School of Management Studies, NIT, Calicut, and a senior research and publication associate at IAM, Horiko. He published many articles and present papers at national and international conferences. He is also invited as a resource person at a faculty development programs, academic and corporate workshops for organizations like Bahrain, Road Transport Company, etc. He is an executive member at various financial uh, professional bodies in India and member of board of studies for various colleges and universities. He is the academic advisor for different colleges and universities. He writes in the New Indian Express, the Hindu and the Deccan Herald newspapers. He has a book translation to his credit and runs a discussion forum, Let's Chat, and YouTube channel, Learners Law. He mentors four startups, Mother Media, Dream a Dozen, Securistas, Moshi Moshi. Apart from this, he is also a trained musician who won Kendri Vidyalaya National Award in Carnatic Music in the year 1999. Well, sir, first of all, on behalf of MES Kaledi College, Anarka, and Department of Commerce, I welcome our chief guest, Rishigar Sir. He has come to share his knowledge and vast experience to the participants. Okay, sir. Next, I had this welcome to all teachers, scholars, and students from different colleges come over here. And also welcome to teachers, scholars, and the students from this college participating here. Once again, I welcome you all and I invite our Chief Guest Rishigesh Sir for handling the session. Please, Sir. Thank you, Sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yes Sir. Okay. Thank you at first for that very detailed introduction. I had in fact uh, requested as Sir Sir to keep it short, but I think uh, uh, you read out almost everything that uh, was shared. So thank you for that at first. Thanks also to Dr. Rasser, sir, who had invited me for this conference for the trust and the confidence that you have reposed in me and also for giving me this opportunity to share some of my views, some of my experiences um, or some of my perspectives about the topic that we have chosen for discussion today, which is digital currency and the future of money. Now, this topic actually got my attention when I came across a book written by an Indian American economist. His name is Ishwar S. Prasad. He's a professor at at the Cornell University, and uh, this book was published in 2021. Uh, by the Harvard Publishing House. Now, what is interesting about this book is uh, it has a very, um, you know, cutting edge uh, look at how fast the financial, the domain of finance is changing, and how it is bringing an end of cash and is leading to a rise of several other digital currencies including cryptocurrencies. And he spoke, he speaks about all of these changes in the context of the transforming economy 
and he speaks both the good aspects of it as also the bad, uh, the worst aspects of it. So I found that book quite interesting, and I read and you know found it quite insightful to get a, an idea, a picture about. Uh, what will be the finance of future? And uh, the image of that book is what I have displayed on the screen. Uh, and uh, he explains that the world of finance is going through a major disruption, and it is likely to affect the corporations, the bankers, the state, and in, indeed everyone who's directly or indirectly involved in this. So this transformation of money is going to fundamentally rewrite how ordinary people live. You know, how many of you, I have never imagined that my parents would be able to do a UPI or a Google Pay. But they did. Because there was no option during COVID and many of the payments had to be contactless. So they eventually learned and they switched and they, they are the ones who are advising me a lot of, um, you know, you, you get a scratch card and a lot of other benefits when you are a part of online transactions. So even the older generation are forced to or they have, uh, they have been compelled during COVID to switch to digital payment uh, modes like UPI, Google Pay, Paytm, etc. So it is getting, uh, affecting everyone um, and in every sector is what my point is. So in this book Prasad uh, foresees the end of financial cash. He says he predicts that in next couple of years the cash that we are currently holding in our wallet would no more be there. And the driving force of this would be the evolution of uh, the mobile phones, the credit cards and several other central banks who are issuing their own currencies, digital currencies and uh, also with the popularity of the social media uh, and um, you know online games uh, all of this has actually contributed to making digital currency more popular especially among the youth. So I as a faculty at Christ University have learned a lot from my students who have already, either their parents or their friends who are abroad are already uh, holding currencies, digital currencies and the way they play the online games and a lot of other things and I end up learning from my students. So what I'm trying to say is my parents have changed they have also switched to um, the online and digital currency mode of payment. My students have also changed. So <laughs> indirectly it compels me also to change or switch towards, uh, you know, uh, using these digital payment options. But before I begin uh, a formal discussion about this topic, I wish to share two of my very personal experiences which I think will also set a context to the topic that we are discussing. So I was conducting a workshop for a couple of entrepreneurs in Kerala way back in 2015 or uh, I think it was in 2016 and it was happening at Hotel Le Meridian and the organizers of that uh, uh, event told me that we need to take a break and go to the HDFC bank Hello, the sir? Kalur, Kalur branch Hello? of the HDFC bank. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, sir it is difficult to find your face fully. So just uh, adjust your face. Camera. Okay, thank you. Is that okay? Okay, sir. All right. Thank you. Sorry for that. So, uh, as I said in 2016, I was uh, asked to go to this HDFC bank, and what I find is. The front office manager is replaced with a robot and that's the image which uh, I had shared on the screen. And I spoke to the uh, HDFC bank branch manager and he said, sir, we are planning to implement it at least in 30% of the branches all across India, which means, assume there are 1000 
branches of HDFC, out of 1,300 front office managers will get replaced with this new device called, uh, you know, the, the, the robot. Now, it was a surprise for me way back in 2016, but then that's the hard reality. You know, banks are also switching towards utilizing the technological advancements, and this is just one example of it. Now, I'm just setting a context, giving you examples, trying to personalize the topic so that you also can somewhere relate to it. So that was one of my experience, and this is a small video which I wish to play. I don't know whether we'll be able to hear the audio, but I wish to play that video. Which PFC Bank has been a pioneer in introducing digital innovation in the banking sector. Today, we proudly unveil yet another milestone in the history of Indian banking. Welcome to HDFC Bank. In our efforts to drive digital innovation in our banking services, we are today introducing a new age technology. Would you like to take a guess what it could be? How about a technology that uh, gets me a loan in a few seconds? Yes, I could do something with my smartwatch, like make transactions. Okay. What else could it be? Schedule payment every month for my kids. Is it possible to pay all fees through an app? Do you think it can give me a loan? Well, I'm a writer working at home. Okay. So, would that be possible for the technology? Yeah. Mm, HDFC Bank already has introduced these digital innovations. So, how about we go inside and find out what surprise HDFC Bank has in store for us? Yeah, let's do that. Sure. Let's go. It's quite a uh, lengthy video, but I just wanted to show how and what was my experience while I entered the HDFC bank of the Kalur branch in Kerala. You know, you're getting greeted by robots. There was another experience, uh, that this was post-Covid, where uh, I and my wife went for a dinner and uh, I had forgotten my wallet. And what I found interesting is, she had bought a watch with which she could do a payment. She had also not carried her credit card, but using her watch, she was using that doing the payment. Been up for so long. That's fun. And papa? Oh, wait. Your bills. Yeah. 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 Most of you would have uh, watched these videos or you might have heard about these payment watch or uh, the front office manager being replaced with technology. I mean, these are all some of the examples of how the banking sector has changed in the past five years, uh, mostly post-COVID. Now, uh, what is interesting also about, uh, it's not just a scenario in India, Globally, a lot of changes have started happening. Uh, if you take the example of China, it is not the government but the private payment service providers like Alipay and WeChat, which I've displayed, uh, that, that has blanketed the entire Chinese economy. They are, they are serving, or their service is bigger than uh, the uh, government, um, you know, payment system. So what I'm trying to say is, private options of payment have also grown along with the government mechanisms of cash payments or digital cash payments, right? So, uh, this is an interesting hypothetical question. I'm just give, uh, setting a context. I've still not got into the topic, but I hope uh, all of these examples would 
you know, help you get a, uh, get a contextualize the topic. Now, this is a very interesting cartoon which I have seen. Who brought digital revolution in your company? Is a question being raised by a manager, and there were two, three options. Um, one is the chief executive officer, the second is the chief uh, technical officer, and third is COVID-19. I'm sure you, uh, you all have the answer. Many of the institutions were forced to switch to digital payments because of the contactless payment, which we were compelled to do due to COVID. But two years, what uh, I still remember the head of the Microsoft had said, what we had visualized for the next 10 years just happened in two years. You know, what they were planning, what kind of changes they wanted to implement in, in the technology space for the next 10 years happened in just, they were, all of us were forced to switch to this uh, online payment mode. So COVID is also one of the reasons why uh, digital payment or the digital currency became quite popular. So I've given you a couple of examples. One is of HDFC, how they've integrated robots um, in the front office management. Uh, I had also given State Bank of India and Ty uh, Titan Watch Company, how they came up with a watch called the Payment Watch. So you don't have to carry your wallet, you don't have to carry your credit or debit cards, you just have to swipe your watch, you know, provided your watch is connected to your bank account. Now, third example which I was talking about, probably the scenario which led to the uh, growth of digital currency is certainly the COVID-19. COVID-19 also forced people to uh, switch to uh, digital currency. Now, there is one more factor which I wanted to spend some time and then get into the exact topic which is digital money or digital currency. I'm sure you would agree that we are currently living in the fourth phase of industrial revolution. The first phase was with the introduction of steam engine, then we have electricity, then we have computer, which is the third stage of industrial revolution. And today, only the imagination is the limit. We are currently talking about technologies which we have never ever heard of. For example, artificial intelligence. Now, all of these are technologies are also getting integrated with the banking um, service provide uh, services. And it is also enhancing the digital currency uh, transactions. Uh, one, of course, is the artificial intelligence. Another is robotics, the application of uh, you know humanoids. You might have heard about this uh, robot called Sophia, just like HDFC Bank. There was another robot which got citizenship in Saudi Arabia. Right? So there is virtual reality, augmented reality, Internet of Things, big data analytics, machine learning, so this is what constitutes the fourth phase of industrial revolution. And corresponding to this fourth phase of industrial revolution, which includes artificial intelligence, robotics, and so on and so forth, there has also been something called fourth phase of banking. Now, the first phase of banking is the traditional banking. And the second phase of banking uh, has to do with uh, self-service banking, where uh, we had access to online banking. Uh, the third phase is redefined with mobile banking. Like you can, you don't have to go to a bank, nor do you have to sit in front of your laptop. You just have to make payments using your mobile phones. Now from there, we have further advanced and uh, we are today talking about banking 4.0 where there are, uh, the banking can be done anytime, anywhere. If you have a mobile, if you have a watch, just as I quoted the example, um, the technology which is AI based, the technology which can uh, personalize your uh, banking experience has actually revolutionized the banking sector and therefore we call it the fourth phase of 
banking, fourth phase of industrialization corresponding to the fourth industrial revolution, right? So the, all of these factors, whatever I've spoken so far, has contributed to the growth of digital money, not just in India, but globally, is what my point is. So, uh, the, uh, what exactly is banking 4.0, similar to industry 4.0? You have, uh, you know, big data being used on a very large scale. Today, the credit score can be mapped by the AI-generated software. You don't have to produce documents. They already would have all the data points for them to make a, a decision and award you a credit score. There is machine learning integrated with the banking service. There is open banking. Um, of course, there are concerns of cyber security, it can now the banks, uh, even if you are confined to a very small geography, once you are switching to online platform, your presence is global. So the scalability of the banks have also increased. Uh, now mobiles have become, cashless transactions have also become quite common. All of this is what constitutes the banking 4.0. So having said this, Let's try to understand what exactly is a digital money or digital currency in this context of industry 4.0, in the context of uh, the banking 4.0. Now, digital currency is a form of currency that is available only in digital or electronic form. That's a very simple way of understanding it. And it is also called the digital money or the electronic money. These are all different terms which are used for uh, digital currency. You also call it electronic currency or cyber cash. Now, a digital currency can, can be recorded or distributed uh, on, a, on a distributed database on the internet. So you don't have a cash in your wallet, but you have your database on the internet which would act as your digital currency. Now they exa exhibit the same properties similar to that of a currency, the, the traditional currency. But generally they do not have a um, physical form, what, what in other words is known as the fiat currency. Fiat, the uh, cash is otherwise known as the fiat currency. Uh, historically that is what we have been using, uh, which are printed bank notes or minted coins. So, all the features of the printed banknotes or minted coins are seen in these digital currencies as well. However, uh, you know this almost three percent of the UK economy. If I, I can take one example, are notes and coins, and today almost seventy nine percent in UK has already change to electronic money has already changed to um, you know digital currency so i'm just quoting one example of uk so is the case with UK, uh, us but what is interesting is indian scenario is not also not bad india is also extremely well with its upi and that's the story which we'll uh, try to uncover now what exactly are digital currencies. As I said, uh, if you try to understand the characteristics or probably uh, a little bit of the history is what I have uh, showcased on screen. Uh, it actually started in the year 1983 when people came up with uh, a travel reservation system. Uh, but uh, later David Chong is the one who initiated his venture became bankrupt, so he couldn't continue. And the next form of uh, uh, digital currency is the e-gold, which was launched in the year 96. Uh, Coca-Cola had a lending machine uh, with, uh, with these currencies, and uh, PayPal also launched something in, in US dollar. Um, but the actual growth of currency happens in 2008, when the bitcoins were launched. So bitcoins uh, became the most widely used and the accepted form of digital currency. 
Now, uh, what are some of the general characteristics of digital currency? I think that needs to be understood before we proceed further. Now, as I said, uh, they do not have a physical equivalent. Digital currencies, uh, I mean, it can be centralized and de decentralized as well. Uh, what What is decentralized and centralized will, there is another slide coming. Um, you know, fiat currency which exists in the physical form or the traditional currency which uh, we all carry in hand is a centralized system of production. You have uh, Reserve Bank of India printing and circulating the notes, uh, which is done by the central bank and the government agencies. Whereas uh, digital currencies, there are decentralized models as well, unlike the traditional currency. Now, some of the prominent cryptocurrencies like the Bitcoin and Ethereum are all examples of decentralized digital currency systems. Now, uh, it, just like the traditional currency, digital currency also have a transfer value which means you can transfer it just like you, you transfer a cash, you transfer, uh, you know, do an online transfer. Um, you can also, uh, but the major problem is with the mental shift. People are used to using the hard cash and the major problem is a kind of a mind block to switch to this digital currency. But I think uh, over a period it has extended, it has grown further and is gaining uh, more and more acceptance. So I've just listed a few features of uh, digital currency on screen. Those of you who want to take a screenshot, do that to understand the characteristics or the, uh, the nature of digital currencies. Now, broadly speaking, there are three different types of digital currencies. Uh, one is cryptocurrency. Second is virtual currency and the third is central bank digital currencies. So I'll be confining my presentation, I'll be discussing only on these three aspects because if I get into blockchain, if I get into so many other emerging concepts, um, this one hour won't be sufficient to complete our presentation or discussion, we'll have to extend. So I'll confine only to uh, uh, the three concepts, crypto, virtual and central bank digital currencies. Now, what exactly is a uh, cryptocurrency? The cryptocurrencies are digital currencies that use cryptography to secure and verify transactions. So you have your it, uh, your uh, transactions are coded; they, they are cryptic, and that is what brings in security for the transaction. Uh, they also use to manage and control creation of uh, you know uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are some of the examples of, of uh, cryptocurrencies. And uh, different countries have different jurisdiction. Um, some countries it is regulated and some they are not uh, regulated. Um, cryptocurrency is, a, as I said, is a, one of the form of digital currency and uh, uh, it allows electronic money systems to be decentralized. You don't have to have a central bank to control and monitor cryptocurrency, it can also be decentralized, right? Um, so it is effectively being implemented with the use of a blockchain and the digital ledger system or the record keeping system, which has also uh, transformed the banking. Um, so uh, that's one form of uh, uh, digital currency, which is cryptocurrency. Now the second form of uh, digital currency, which is uh, becoming quite common is the virtual currencies. Now these are unregulated digital currencies but controlled by the developers of founding organizations. For example, there are certain games which can uh, help you get this virtual currency. If you win one level of a game, you get certain virtual currencies. But that uh, playing that uh, video game. It is confined to the founding organization is what the speciality of virtual currency is. You cannot use it beyond uh, that boundaries. So it, it is confined to the stakeholders